Hey everybody, welcome back. Glad you could join us again. We're going to continue on with our fluid power discussions. And we last left off talking about flow. Uh, we talked about the importance of flow, how uh, flow really determines the speed of our actuators, whether they be uh, rotary actuators, whether they be um, uh, hydraulic motors, cylinders, controlling the stroke and everything. We uh, even uh, learned how to calculate the stroke speed and retract speed of a cylinder based on the flow and, of course, the area of that piston. So both of those work together to determine how fast a cylinder is going to stroke or retract or how fast a motor is going to turn. And flow is really, really important. It's, it's especially important and often overlooked when you're troubleshooting. A lot of times people want to, want to go immediately to pressure, okay? And they think, well, we, got, we need more pressure from the pump and things like that. And remember, the, the pump actually creates the flow, okay? And we're fixing to get into uh, more about pressure here in this, uh, in this little uh, segment here. But the thing about flow, too, is that, as you saw, we used a uh, flow control valve uh, in our circuit. And uh, you may have uh, several different hydraulic components running off of your hydraulic power unit and with this part of your system. Uh, and you, know, you may have uh, several cylinders or, or actuators that you need to run full bore, okay, full speed, okay? Uh, but there's maybe a part of this, that process that the cylinder needs to stroke very slowly or at a, 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 a decreased speed as opposed to it running with the full flow of the pump. So that helps us uh, with the flow control valves we were talking about throttling that flow back on that particular cylinder or that particular actuator. Maybe you don't want a rotary actuator or a, uh, a hydraulic motor turning uh, at full speed, but you still need the flow of these cylinders to, to actuate at full speed. You can use that flow control valve to modulate uh, and control the uh, speed of something that you might need to run it a little bit slower. But my point is is that you, know, you can break the flow uh, to these, uh, you can throttle the, the flow to these actuators down uh, and that's why we use the flow control valve in our system, okay, as opposed to throttling the pump down entirely, okay. We don't want to throttle the flow to our whole system down just because of one actuator. We want to be able to do that individually, and that's what your flow control valves can do for you. But we've talked a lot about flow, and now we want to move a little bit into pressure, okay. Pressure is basically the force behind the flow, okay. At some point, uh, flow could possibly stop and you need pressure to continue on and, and to help force it through our circuits, like into our devices okay, and actuators. So again, pressure is the force behind the flow trying to push the fluid through the circuit. And these two are inversely proportional. Well, what that means is that when one is up, the other is down. Okay. So if we've got flow, uh, we have uh, full flow, we have low pressure. And then when we stop our flow, our pressure builds and it raises. So they are inversely proportional. Okay. So <clears throat> taking a look at our cylinder here, if we're using our black arrows here as flow, okay, the, the flow is going in here until we uh, stroke the cylinder full uh, full extension, and then that flow has nowhere else to go. Okay, and, uh, and so it so it maxes out. So then we start to build pressure. Okay, and of course when it goes back the other way, it builds pressure in the opposite direction because we no longer have flow uh, because the cylinder has nowhere else to go. Okay, so a couple of rules that we want to try to remember is that resistance determines the flow rate. Okay, let's think about this for just a second. Uh, you got a garden hose, okay, and we kink that garden hose. So what do we do with our flow? We shut the flow off, okay, and we restrict that flow. That's our resistance. And what happens is we have pressure building up. We have pressure starting to back up okay, on us, okay. So our pressure builds because we have kinked that hose and we are no longer have flow. It seems pretty simple, okay. So resistance determines the flow rate. Okay, and also if you look at our uh, flow uh, control valve that we had, we were controlling the flow by adding resistance in our circuit. The resistance being we were throttling down, we were closing that orifice off a little bit more and more and more, uh, creating more re and more resistance uh, as a result of throttling our flow back. So resistance determines the flow rate, and the flow rate will then determine the pressure. Using our hose example again, we kink that hose, We've, we've, we've sh shut off or choked off the flow rate and our pressure goes up, okay? And as I said, uh, pumps are rated in 
GPM, gallons per minute, and the flow rate determines the actuator speed. But if we go back to the example, and I will read this to you because I know the print's real small. But, you know, like I said, I, I Googled this uh, Parker five gallon per minute flow rate uh, uh, pump rated at five gallons per minute. Okay. Uh, it also has a uh, maximum working pressure that this, this pump can create. It can deliver for us. And in this case, and I'm going to read it to you, it says the maximum working pressure in PSI is 2,000 pounds. Okay. Um, and so basically we got this pump running at 2,000 RPM or whatever it's driving it, whatever our prime mover is, um, we're going to deliver five gallons per minute, but we have a maximum working pressure of 2,000 pounds. Basically what that's saying is that uh, this, this pump can withstand up to 2,000 pounds before damage starts to uh, occur. Also it's good to know the rating of this pump for uh, when you're looking at uh, your other devices. Um, some of these other devices may not be rated at 2,000, maybe they're rated at 1,000 PSI or something. But you've got a pump that can deliver 2,000 pounds, so damage can occur. And we're going to talk about how we control that. But my point is, is that it, it does have, you just can't have this unlimited amount of pressure. So uh, the pumps do have a uh, maximum rating uh, for their pressure, but we still, uh, we still spec them out um, in for gallons per minute. And like I said, so a system can only handle so much pressure before this occurs. This is a piston pump that has seen excessive pressure uh, and it has become damaged. You've lost some of the pistons off the ends of the rods there. Uh, but um, the point is, is that it, you know, we can only create so much pressure before something's got to give. So uh, that point is that we call it is maximum pressure. And that is when we have zero flow, period. No, there's no flow at all. That is the maximum pressure that that system will have, okay? And it is created uh, by the pump trying to force the flow uh, when there's nowhere to go. That pressure ramps up to its maximum point, and that's when we start uh, having damage. So we've got to have some way to relieve this pressure, some way to, to uh, save our system, some way to keep it from just uh, completely annihilating itself. So we use what is known as the pressure relief valve, okay? This is what one looks like. It's a sort of similar like the one you're using in the lab uh, on top of the motor, on top of the HPU, on the trainer. Um, there's a, this, this is the adjustment right here. This is the knob that you're turning. Uh, this one doesn't have a knob on it in the picture, obviously. But when you're turning and adjusting that knob, you are, you are adjusting the uh, pressure rating uh, of this, uh, of this uh, pressure relief valve, okay? So um, if this is what we call, it's a cartridge type. Uh, you'll, often, you'll see that the one there, even in the lab, is in a little block manifold, and um, I don't have one to show you, but uh, these usually screw in a, some type of a, a block manifold, and they, uh, they're, they're exposed to system pressure, and the pressure of the, the uh, flow of the oil will come into here, and if we shut the flow off in our system, pressure will build up, and there'll be much like, a, sort of like a check valve almost, uh, but it will upseat a, a little valve inside. Uh, this has got a pre the spring right here applying pressure in this direction to keep it seated. But if the pressure exceeds the amount of spring force, it will offseat that valve, open it up, and then fluid will flow out of these holes. And this is all encased in a, in a, box, in a, uh, in a block manifold. Um, this fluid will then uh, flow out of these holes and it's ported back to tank. Okay, so we relieve our system pressure through these holes and goes directly back to tank, okay? So uh, here's another example. This is uh, this gives you a little more visual here. Uh, down here it says pump. So our pump pressure, this is exposed to pump pressure, and we've got it there on the side. So uh, if, uh, if we shut our flow off completely, pump pressure will build up, and you can see this seat on this valve, and it kind of seats down here, and it lifts it up off of its seat, and the flow then goes back to tank, okay, so it relieves itself. And again, this is the spring pressure that's applying downward pressure. Uh, the pressure has to build up enough to overcome this spring pressure. Once it does, it dumps it back to tank. We often want to uh, set our pressure with a pressure gauge so that we know that it's going to open up before it damages everything, before it tears everything up, okay, because the pump will, can self-destruct and it can take everything out in the system with it too. Uh, this, uh, <clears throat> this area up here is also filled with oil, but it's sort of static oil. So uh, when it goes, um, when it raises up, 
uh, it will take the tank, but also when it seats itself back, the pressure is lowered, uh, some of this oil can go back to the drain, go to the tank as well. I'm not really too worried about the oil in, that, in there, but that's just, it, it, is, it does exist. So this is a pressure relief valve. Here's a little flow uh, of a little uh, graphic I've got for you here. We've got the flow coming in from our, from our pressure port uh, in our cistern. It's got full, exposed to full pressure, and it lifts that ball off the seat, and then it flows back to tank. Uh, just a little bit different configuration, but you can see the red arrow pointing. It's uh, the spring is uh, applying force down on there. It eventually gets overcome by the fluid pressure, and we dump it to tank. And our system relieves itself that way and keeps it from damaging. Okay, so here's it. Here it is in a schematic. Okay, symbol here. Something you're going to want to recognize. I mean, uh, remember. Okay, and you remember the arrow. Remember the arrow from the uh, directional. I mean, excuse me, the uh, uh, flow control valve. Well, that arrow means this is an adjustable pressure relief valve, okay? And this is in our schematic. Again, you should start to really be understanding all these symbols, not as many on this one. But what's going on is we connect our pressure relief valve to pump pressure. This is before it goes out into the system, before it goes to our, uh, our valve, before it goes to our cylinders. We want to pre pre uh, protect the entire system. So we port... We take a, you know, a connection right here, a little T right here, and we port it over there into our pressure relief valve. And I've got another one here, a graphic here to show you in just a second. But this is where once it um, builds up enough pressure, it uh, opens the valve and it runs it straight back into tank. Okay? Now, I've put this little red block here. This is kind of what's going on here. This red block, is, I just threw it in there so we could block the pressure from anything down here. Okay? So we're building pressure, it has nowhere to go. The flow has nowhere to go because I've blocked the flow. Up comes the pressure. Remember our principle is inversely proportional. Okay? The pressure starts to build and we are pouring it in our, to our uh, pressure relief valve. It's building and building and building and it has to build above 3,000 PSI. Anything under 3,000 PSI uh, is going to remain closed uh, and the pump will just continue to build pressure. Hopefully, the pump is rated for, uh, higher than 3,000 uh, PSI. But uh, at 3,000 PSI, when it finally builds up 3,000 PSI, which would be rather quickly, that pressure goes into the relief valve. This little arrow right here tells us it's closed because there's not a direct line from port to tank because this arrow is not, uh, this is not giving us a, a flow direction uh, in line with the port from pressure line. Okay, so we got it, and it finally builds enough pressure, it pushes it up there. This little symbol here tells us that we get a path straight to tank, and it starts to relieve the pressure that's built up from the pump right here. Okay, so uh, this is another symbol for you. Uh, again, we have, it's a spring, as you saw right there. That's, that is the spring right there. All right, they're showing that in, in our uh, symbol, but this is an adjustable uh, pressure relief valve. It's got spring operation that keeps it uh, seated. This dotted line here is our pilot line. Okay, this is a small amount of pressure. Uh, I'm excuse me, a small amount of flow. We don't want a lot of flow going into to, to operate this. We just a little bit of flow to operate this, but we do have to have that pressure, and we call that pilot pressure. And the pop, this dashed line tells us that this is a pilot operated uh, valve. In other words, it doesn't use full flow, it just uses a small amount of flow, just enough to open this valve up. Doesn't take a lot, but we want to overcome the, uh, the uh, spring pressure. But like I said, it doesn't take a lot of flow, but it does take the pressure, okay, to lift it up there and overcome that spring pressure, and then we dump it back to the tank. So we've got a pilot operated, spring loaded, adjustable relief valve, okay? So that's your symbol, um, and I see, and it's just like this one that we see here. Uh, this one, however, does not show the pilot, li uh, the pilot line as a dash line. Sometimes you'll see that, sometimes you won't, but most of the time if it's done right, you'll see the dash line for the pilot operated feature of the pressure relief valve. And that's how the pressure relief valve works. That's how we keep our system from just uh, d destroying itself. And that's the pressure that we, but however, you know, we're going to need pressure up to a certain point to continue to push that flow, okay? So we're going to need the pressure because if you've got a load, we, you know, you got a load and your flow will want to stop. However, when the pressure builds, it will get behind that flow and continue to push the fluid and we are able to move large loads. So we don't just stop because the flow stops. 
uh, unless, of course, an actuator completely extends, and there's, you know, that's the end of that. But if we're trying to move a load, the, pressure, the flow will go into the cylinder. I'm using the cylinder as an example. The flow will go into the cylinder until, the, until uh, that, uh, the area behind the piston is uh, completely filled, and then it will want to stop. However, when it stops, the pressure builds up, and the pressure continues to help the flow go, and they work, they, they work together. Um, however, they are inversely proportional. So I think now you probably understand that. Uh, we're going to make this a little bit short. So uh, we're going to shut this one down. I want you to uh, start up the next one. Again, be taking notes. It's, I can't tell you how important this is. We'll be taking notes. And uh, if you've got questions, you don't understand something, by all means, uh, you know, come see me, okay? But shut this one down and be sure to come back for the next one because it's going to be just as much fun, okay? All right, thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.